Before I get into today's video, I want to remind you to subscribe to the channel. I would love if you guys did. We're on our road to 133,000 subscribers, and I am trying to get to about 150,000 subscribers by the end of the year. So I would appreciate if you guys would just subscribe to the channel and support my journey to become a full-time YouTuber. You know, I've been doing this for six years, and I, I never really thought that this was going to be possible. So thank you ahead of time for your support. All right, but let's get into this video because we got to talk about something that dropped a little bit before the Direct. It was some news from one of Nintendo's major partners that seems to hint, at least if you're reading the tea leaves of what was said, appears to heavily suggest that the next Nintendo platform, which we've been calling Nintendo Switch 2 for a little bit now, but we don't really know what it's going to be called, will have backwards compatibility. Now, we know Nintendo has already heavily suggested that there needs to be some sort of forward compatibility with things like Nintendo accounts, and we know Nintendo accounts are also tied into Nintendo Switch Online. So you might already presume that maybe the, the NSO games could be carried forward, possibly digital games. But the, here's the thing. None of this is confirmed because Nintendo has to announce a platform in order for us to have confirmations of backwards compatibility. But something was said about Mario plus Rabbid Sparks of Hope by the CEO of Ubisoft, Yves Guimot, in an interview he did with GameIndustry.biz that is quite fascinating. And we're going to read a segment of that interview that was posted over on Video Game Chronicle. And we're going to give you the full context here because it does have to do with advice Nintendo gave them and some other stuff that kind of leads into a comment about how long they think this game is going to last. So, in an interview with GameIndustry.biz, Yves Guimot suggested Nintendo had advised the company that it would be beneficial to release the sequel on Switch's successor. 2017's Switch-exclusive Mario Plus Rabbids Kingdom Battle has reached over 7.5 million players, according to Ubisoft Milan creative director David Soliani. Now, these are old numbers. It's probably creeped its way up to 8 million, but we don't actually know. So despite the excellent ratings and players' reception, as well as an ambitious marketing plans, we were surprised by Mario Plus Rabbit Sparks of Hope underperformance in the final weeks of 2022 and early January. And this is a statement Ubisoft made earlier this year. While Guimot said that the market is suffering from inflation, he did tell GameIndustry.biz the company should have been more patient with Sparks of Hope release. I think it was a different issue with Mario, he said. We had already released a Mario Rabbids game on Switch. So by doing another, we had two similar experiences on one machine. On Nintendo, games like this never die. There are 25 Mario games on Switch. Nintendo has advised that it's better to do one iteration on each machine. We were a bit too early. We should have waited for the next console. He added, because you could play a great game and we think it'll last for 10 years because we will update it for the new machine that will come out in the future. Now, that comment could mean a lot. 10 years, we'll update it for a new machine in the future. Yeah, they could bring it in a deluxe version to the new machine. They could obviously add 4K support or whatever. I mean, we, we don't really know if the new machine is even going to have 4K, but we're just kind of presuming based on rumors. It's interesting, though, when he says it'll be a 10-year game and it'll be bringing it forward to the new system. It kind of feels like, even though they did say they'll update it, and who knows, maybe that means another batch of DLC will be coming that might even be like half game or full game DLC. I do think that he seems to be suggesting, without being able to actually say it, that Mario plus Rabbids will be playable, Sparks of Hope will be playable on the new machine if you potentially own it right now. And I, I think that is a, a sign, anyways, that backwards compatibility is going to be a thing. Now, do I think Ubisoft knows what Nintendo's next system is going to be? Well, yeah. If they had a conversation with Nintendo before and or after the game came out about the release timing of the game and Nintendo's suggestion on, on what they could have done differently, to me, it would it would seem that Nintendo has probably shared with them what that new device is, and uh, they might already have dev units and all of that as well, especially if they're already making plans 
on updating it for that machine, well, then you're okay. If you're already making plans for that, then chances are you probably already have those dev units, and you would probably already know if it's backwards compatible. So this, to me, is a must-have feature, but it's not something that's ever really been guaranteed with Nintendo. Now, with Nintendo's home consoles, they've pretty much never done it, uh, not in an official capacity anyways. There's been add-ons and stuff. Uh, with their handhelds, it's been a little bit of a different story. And if you consider Switch a handheld, maybe you're leaning this way. Uh, you know, you could play Game Boy slash Game Boy Color games on Game Boy Advance. You could play Game Boy Advance games on, uh, you know, the, the Nintendo DS. You couldn't play the original Game Boy games, though, so it's only been like one generation backwards compatibility. Uh, but they did that again with, you know, 3DS. You could play DS games. And then they stopped because if the Switch is a handheld, well, it doesn't play 3DS games. And obviously, Switch doesn't play Wii U games, so Switch sort of rebooted Nintendo in a way. So the way that we have to approach this is that it is probably likely that Nintendo's looking into it. We've heard from people like Modern Vintage Gamer and a few others out there that it's not as simple as gamers think it is. Like, we just want a feature to exist, but there's a lot of nitty-gritty that goes into it, and Modern Vintage Gamer kind of believes that it shouldn't be a foregone conclusion because of the difficulties in switching to a newer architecture, even in the same line, and how it might not be just a, a, a simple switch turn, and it w could require a lot of people to put work into their old games to make them work. And this is true in some regards. I mean, this happens with Xbox and PlayStation as well. More and more games become, you know, compatible and cross-compatible and forward compatible over time as updates are released. But I do think that... Nintendo is going to emphasize some form of backwards compatibility. If it's not the entire library at launch, I do think it's going to be a massive chunk of that library with promises to continue updating and making things more and more compatible. And I do think, in, in the terms of this game, Ubisoft's clearly going to put in the work to make it compatible, just like Nintendo's going to put in the work to make sure all their games are compatible. But will third parties always put in the work to make sure their games work? I don't know. Ideally, it would just be a hardware solution and all games would just plug and play like it was on their uh, handheld systems in the past, but that, it's a lot different story today. So I do think that this is at least a hint towards a future that we all, I think, want. I don't think there's anyone who says, man, I don't want backwards compatibility. I don't want to play my Switch games on the next system. And I guess if you're someone who wants it to be a streaming stick or you're someone who wants them to go back to just a traditional home console with discs, then yeah, you might not want them to put on the Switch disc or the Switch uh, cartridge reader. Uh, maybe you want them to split back off in the handheld. So like, look, I understand that there's going to be some outliers out there that will say, hey, I don't want backwards compatibility because of the direction I want Nintendo to take. But I think in general, if we presume that Nintendo is not about to abandon the uh, hybrid arena because they've been so successful there it'd be very strange if they didn't give it at least one more go but then again nintendo's not always done good with that second go around so we'll see but if nintendo does go have another go at this hybrid situation where they're making all games for one platform backwards compatibility for most of us is a must but it's not a guarantee Modern Vintage Gamer is right in that much. It is not a foregone conclusion. It is not a guarantee. And it's not even just because of the difficulties of making it happen. It's also just because Nintendo doesn't guarantee it. Nintendo has done backwards compatibility in the past. They've also not done it. So it's sort of a crapshoot. But I do think that at least subtly, like subtly, like just a little bit in this interview, there was almost a hint at it. But it's Yves Guimont, who's been at this a long time, and he knows how to hint at things without necessarily giving you the exact confirmation needed. So, um, but yeah. By the way, the, the DLC is pretty good. I'm, 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 pl I'm playing it a little bit today. I just started playing it today. Uh, dude, this Mario Plus Rabbids DLC, eh, this might be the best world. This might be better than anything they had in the original release, and that's that's exciting because... I, I, I love Mario plus rabbits. I'm sorry. Maybe this whole video just existed for me to have an excuse to gush at the end. I don't know. Anyways, guys, thank you so much for tuning in, and I'll catch you in the next video.